Hello everyone, this is Dhruv from Ediweka and I welcome you all to this session where I will be talking about Kubernetes. So without any further ado, let's take a look at today's agenda. So we will start this session by first understanding what is orchestration and what is Kubernetes. Moving ahead, we will understand the components of Kubernetes as well as its workflow. And finally, we will wrap up this session with a case study. Before we begin, do consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on trending technologies. And also, if you are interested in online training certification in Kubernetes, check out the link given in the description box below. So let's first understand what is orchestration. So if you see in system administration, orchestration is the automatic configuration, coordination and management of computer systems and software. A number of tools exist for automation of server, configuration and management, including Ansible, Puppet, Salt, Terraform and AWS CloudFormation. So before I deep dive into the orchestration system, let me just quickly list down the challenges faced without this system. So as you can see in this diagram, when multiple services run inside containers, you may want to scale these containers. In small scale industries, it may work out, but in large scale industries, this is really tough to do. That's because it would increase the cost to maintain services and the complexity to run them side by side. Now to avoid setting up services manually and overcome the challenges, something big was needed. This is where container orchestration engine comes into the picture. This engine lets us organize multiple containers in such a way that all the underlying machines are launched. Containers are healthy and distributed in a clustered environment. In today's world, there are mainly two such engines, that is Kubernetes and Docker Swarm. Now let's understand what is Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is a platform that eliminates the manual process involved in deploying containerized applications. It is an open source system that handles the work of scheduling containers onto a complete cluster and manages the workloads to ensure they run as the user intends. Being the Google's brainchild, it offers excellent community and works brilliantly with all the cloud providers to become a multi-container management solution. So moving ahead, let's understand the components of Kubernetes. So Kubernetes cluster consists of a set of worker machines called nodes that run containerized application. Every cluster has at least one worker node. So the worker nodes host the pods that are the components of the application workload, the control panel manages the worker nodes and the pods in the cluster. So control plane components can be run on any machine in the cluster. However, for simplicity, setup scripts typically start all control panel components on the same machine and do not run user containers on the machines. So let's understand the control plane components. So the first one is Kube API Server. The API Server is a component of the Kubernetes control plane that exposes the Kubernetes API. The API server is the front end for the Kubernetes control plane. The main implementation of a Kubernetes API server is Kube API server. Kube API server is designed to scale horizontally. That is, it scales by deploying more instances. You can run several instances of Kube API server and balance traffic between those instances. So the second component under control plane components is etcd. This is a consistent and highly available key value store used as Kubernetes begging store for all cluster data. So the third component is Kube Scheduler. So it is a control plane component that watches for newly created pods with no assigned node and select a node for them to run on. Fourth one is Kube Control Manager. This is a control plane component that runs controller processes. Logically, each controller is a separate process, but to reduce complexity, they are all compiled into a single binary and in a single process called Kube Control Manager. The fifth and the last one is Cloud Control Manager. So this is a Kubernetes control plane component that embeds cloud specific control logic. The cloud controller manages lets you link your cluster into your cloud providers APIs and separates out the components that interact with that cloud platform from components that only interact with your cluster. The cloud control manager only runs controllers that are specific to your cloud provider. If you are running Kubernetes on your own premises or in a learning environment inside your own PC, the cluster does not have a cloud control manager. As with the Kube Control Manager, the Cloud Control Manager combines several logically independent control loops into a single binary that you run as a single process. You can scale horizontally to improve performance or to help tolerate failures. Now moving on to the next type of components that are node components. So under this, the first one is Kubelet. This is an agent that runs on each node in the cluster. It makes sure that containers are running in a pod. Second one is Kube Proxy. 
which is a network proxy that runs on each node uh, in your cluster implementing part of the kubernetes service concept it maintains network rules on nodes these network rules allow network communication to your pods from network sessions inside or outside of your cluster the third and the last one is container runtime so this is the software that is responsible for running containers so kubernetes supports several container runtimes like docker container crio and any implementation of the kubernetes cri means container runtime interface so there are various add-ons as well so add-ons use uh, kubernetes resources to implement cluster features because they are these are providing cluster level features like uh, namespace resources for add-ons belong within the kube system namespace so under this the first one is dns while the other add-ons are not uh, strictly required all kubernetes clusters should have cluster dns as many examples rely on it so cluster dns the dns server in addition to the other dns servers in your environment which serves dns records for kubernetes services second is web ui that is dashboard so dashboard is like like means uh, web ui is a general purpose web based ui for kubernetes clusters it uh, allows users to manage uh, and uh, troubleshoot applications running in the cluster as well as the cluster itself then there are container resource monitoring that records generic time series metrics about containers in a central database and provides a ui for browsing the data the fourth and the last one is cluster level logging which is a mechanism responsible for saving container logs to a central log store with search or browsing interface moving ahead let's understand the workflow of kubernetes or say the architecture of kubernetes so it has like two main components which are known as the master nodes or worker or slave nodes so i'm going to discuss each one of them one by one so initially let's start by understanding the master node so master node is like responsible for the management of kubernetes cluster it is mainly the entry point for all administrative tasks there can be more than one master node in the cluster to check for fault tolerance as you can see in this diagram the master node has various components like api server control manager scheduler and etcd so api server is the entry point for the rest commands used to control the cluster and control manager as we discussed is a, a daemon that regulates the kubernetes cluster and uh, manage uh, like manages different non terminating control loops third is scheduler the scheduler schedules the tasks to slave nodes uh, it stores the resource usage information for each slave node and as we discussed etcd is a simple distributed consistent key value store it's mainly used for shared configuration and service discovery next is the worker or slave nodes for that we have uh, in the diagram so the worker nodes contains all the necessary services to manage the networking between the containers communicate with the master node and assign resources to the scheduled containers as you can see the diagram the worker node has various components like docker container kubelet kube proxy and pods so in docker container docker runs on each of the worker nodes and runs the configured pods second is kubelet so kubelet gets the configuration of a pod from the api server and ensures that the described containers are up and running third is kube proxy so kube proxy acts as a network proxy and a load balancer for a service on a single worker node then there are pods so a pod is one or more containers that logically run together on nodes so this was all about the kubernetes workflow master and worker nodes so let's finally wrap up this session with a case study so uh, yahoo japan is a web services provider headquartered in sunnyvale california as the company aimed to virtualize the hardware company started using openstack in 2012 the engine environment uh, changed very quickly however due to the progress of cloud and container technology the company wanted the capability to launch services on various platforms so the problem is such uh, like how to create image for all required platforms from one application code and deploy those images onto the each platform so for a better understanding we have this diagram here see when the code is changed at the code registry then bare metal images docker containers and virtual machine images that is vm images are created by continuous integration tools pushed into the image registry and then deployed to each infrastructure platform now let us focus on container workflow to understand how they used kubernetes as a deployment platform so let's understand this through this image here which is nothing but a platform architecture so openstack instances are used with docker kubernetes kelly show etcd on top of it to perform various operations like container networking container registry and so on so when you have a number of clusters then it becomes hard to manage them right so they just wanted to create a simple base openstack cluster to 
provide the basic functionality needed uh, for Kubernetes and make the OpenStack environment easier to manage. So by the combination of image creation workflow and Kubernetes, they build the tool chain, uh, which makes it easy for code push to deployment, as you can see here. So this kind of tool chain made sure that all factors for uh, production deployment, such as uh, multi-tenancy, authentication, storage, networking, service discovery were considered. So that's how false Yahoo Japan built an automation tool chain for one click code deployment to Kubernetes running on OpenStack with help from Google and Solenia. So with this, we come to the end of today's session of Kubernetes in 10 minutes. I hope you had a great time learning and understanding about it. And if you have any query, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Until next time, thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!